Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome back to more Democracy 4. Playing as the United States with the Futurist Party. Uh, we just won the election with like 99% uh, of the vote. <laughs> Which was amazing. Uh, not a single vote for our enemies. Not one vote. Absolutely amazing. Positive discrimination. Oh, poopy. There are calls for a law to expressly set quotas for the employment of ethnic and other minorities by large corporations or government institutions. This will put pressure on companies to give higher priority to same, some job candidates than others on the basis of race, sex, or age. Um, so I'll be honest, I struggle with this one. I'm opposed to it in the sense that I don't really think any discrimination is good. I prefer a completely meritocratic society. Um, and that shouldn't be positive or negative discrimination. There shouldn't be either of them. The fact of the matter also does remain there is some negative discrimination. Some of the studies, for example, that have shown that, um, uh, for example, people with foreign-sounding names will fail uh, employment um, opportunities and such uh, when given the exact same transcripts, those kind of blind studies, is really kind of damning, I think, in a lot of ways. So, I don't know, there's, there's a good argument to be made as far as, like, um, the right intentions to do positive discrimination to offset the inevitable negative discrimination. At the same time, if this remains uh, when the negative discrimination starts to go away, then all you've done is created more resentment and it goes right back to where it was. So I don't know, I have serious problems with this as just like an ideological standpoint. Pragmatically, I understand the point of this stuff. Um, for us, this is going to make um, the ethnic women and elderly happy. It's going to upset anything capitalistic. We're going to pass this. And conservatives absolutely despise this. I'll be honest, I thought that um, I thought that we were going to see capitalists be angry. I was wrong. Capitalists don't seem to care. It's conservatives who are really mad. Wow. Okay. You know, I need to remember this for the future. If I ever do a conservative playthrough, then don't pass this. But otherwise, always pass it. This is great. Holy crap. Okay, yeah, I'm glad I made that call. That that works. Amazing stuff. And again, this is... I, I know that I'm talking about something somewhat controversial. It's not that I don't understand. I really do understand why people think that it's important and stuff. I'm not even saying that they're wrong. I just wish that it wasn't necessary, you know? It shouldn't be necessary. In my ideal world, it sh it's not a thing. But, I don't know. Whether we're there right now, that's another question. Alright, so one thing we said we were going to do was go to our... Um, social security system, our pensions, and we were going to just sort of reduce this a lot. And it does take a fair bit of political capital to do this. We can't, like, get rid of this down to none. Unfortunately, that's going to cost too much. But we can reduce this by a huge amount. Now, it does increase poverty, which is a problem. Um, however, it... Well, I'll be honest, like, this isn't... Most of this is just expensive. It's not like the effects are that bad. Maybe I've been too harsh on this. Reducing this to save a lot of money makes sense to me. And I do think that it's generally better for people to rely on private pensions because uh, I don't want people to have to rely upon the state or even their employer for their own retirement. It's better to have that in your own hands. That said, not everybody can afford to save for retirement, so there is that. Um, yeah, we're going to reduce this and save an absolute ton of money so I can redirect it in places that are more important. Such as uh, some environmental policies and stuff, but yeah. Stamp out racism week would make liberals a lot happier. That's a fun thing we can do. Law and order. No, 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 no. Electric cars initiative. This could be pretty good. This improves the uh, environment a lot. Also, more electric cars and stuff. I think we will do this. It makes motorists happy, too. The only problem is it's kind of expensive. But what we can do is basically subsidize government-run electric taxis. And the environment will go up by quite a bit over the next 16 turns, which is great. More electric cars are going to be used. Environmentalist membership goes up, so they're going to be happy. This is all good. In a lot of ways, this is good for me. So we're going to go ahead and pass that one. And we are out of political capital already. Good lord. I feel like we never have enough. We never have enough political capital, do we? All right. Gridlock is back. No! No! Why? Traffic congestion. What happened? Car usage went way up. Aw, oh, man. Why did car usage go up? GDP... And fuel efficiency? Ah. Alright, that's going to be a problem. That's going to hurt our GDP, and it's going to really upset the motorists. But okay. Appoint a UN ambassador. A patriot who fights tooth and claw. Oh, Nikki Haley! <laughs> um, historically foreign aid and supporter of import tariffs. She's not popular. I think we're going to go for the foreign relations guy as well as making liberals happy. Patriots don't like it. Honestly, doesn't matter to me. As long as we have a well-funded military, they'll be thrilled forever. Liberals like it, socialists like it, foreign relations goes up, which is always good. 
Budget report is looking very solid right now. Global economy is still in recession, and we still have a huge surplus. Uh, tonight in news, death penalty. Mm, not going to touch that right now. Oh, hey, an achievement, Shufflemeister. Okay, you're going to make up your mind at some point. Honestly, we might as well get uh, revolving doors fitted to all the ministerial offices. Has anyone quit? No. 43 political capital. Oh, my God. All of a sudden, we got a lot. How? Did I just not? What? This isn't right. Hang on. From popularity, ministers, pre-election, capital per turn. Why did this go up so much? Is this a bug? I think it might be a bug. I think we were only supposed to get 20. I don't think we're supposed to get 43. I've seen this bug in Democracy 3, and once you spend some, it recalculates. So we'll see. International Fusion Research Project. Now, wouldn't that be fun? Why are environmentalists unhappy about that? If we could get fusion to work, if we could, safely, it would be like the best thing ever for the environment, dude. Hey, anyway, forward investment restrictions? No. Drone Strike Act? Nah. Diplomatic service is cheap and good. We're not going to worry about that. Welfare. We need to do some sweeping changes. Sweeping change time. Universal basic income. I hate this. <laughs> I don't want to do this. It's too expensive. Um, I'm curious, though. I'm, I'm very curious in the game what uh, what kind of effects we're looking at. I'd be tempted to pass it just for that, but no, we're not going to. It's too expensive. Universal basic income is something that uh, has been gaining a lot of traction lately. And it's interesting. Um, the problem I have with UBI is not necessarily, like, pragmatic, okay, let me, let me back up. Pragmatically speaking, an interesting idea for the UBI is as a replacement for our existing welfare system, where we currently have a lot of bureaucratic, um, waste from having several different agencies and giving people different packets of money for different things. If you all just gave them a lump sum of income and got rid of, uh, welfare entirely, we could save money and have people have the same cash. Theoretically. Theoretically, and from a pragmatic perspective, this interests me from that. I was actually very interested in listening to Andrew Yang as he talked during the Democratic primaries um, a few months back. It was very interesting to listen to. Uh, however, I have a couple of major concerns with the universal basic income. Um, mainly, a couple of things. One, if people misuse their universal basic income, right, and they spend it all frivolously on the wrong things because they got a cash grant, right? So they didn't get food, for example, or their housing. Are we prepared to let them suffer the consequences of using up what aid we gave them? Are we ready to let them starve on the streets? The answer will almost always be no. The political capital will not exist for that. The political will for that will not happen. And I'm not even sure that it should. So what's going to inevitably happen is we pass universal basic income, we get rid of a lot of welfare, and then welfare starts to come back, and now we have both. That's what I suspect would happen. Secondly, I think it would be very, very easy for a politician to simply run a campaign platform of, I'm going to give you all higher UBI, and therefore uh, vote for me, and it will work every time. So I don't know, I have serious issues with it. With the right restrictions and the right means testing, like statistically, I'd like to see what happens. I'd be very curious to see what happens. I'm not out of this entirely, I just have serious concerns. Let's say that. Synthetic meat. This could be expensive, but it reduces the water shortage a lot, if I recall. The water shortage is still quite bad. The environment has taken a massive, massive dump. Um, new car subsidies would help with this a bit. It improves the GDP by spending some money to get people getting new cars, as well as encouraging them to get more electric cars. It reduces CO2 and it reduces respiratory disease. So this is a good policy. Um, High-speed rail, however, now that'd be fun. Air travel, car usage going down by a lot? Yeah, what about driverless cars though? Wait, this is a thing. Industrial automation, driverless cars going up. That's a separate thing. That's a separate metric I'd have to look at. Yeah, I don't know about that then. Closed airports, no car emissions. I need to reduce car usage by a lot. You can do that by, let's say, banning low miles per gallon cars, which is good for the environment. We're gonna do this. It's gonna upset the motorists, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, it's going to upset them a lot, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then, we are going to pass the new car subsidies to offset what we just did. So this will make them happy. It's going to cost a lot of money, but we're banning your low mile per gallon cars and we're subsidizing you getting a better car. Car usage going up is bad, but I think it's going to be offset by getting rid of the low mile per gallon. And this is just outright across the board in both policies, good for the environment. So we're going to do both of these. I think that will be fine. 
We've got former political capital. By the way, I do think this recalculated, if I have seen correctly. I could be wrong, but I think it did. Um, city farms, only good for farmers. Smart meter program, good for energy efficiency. Um, tax nah, 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 makes environments happy, but it doesn't actually do much for the environment, to be honest. You know, we can just save our political capital. We don't have to spend it on everything. We really don't. In fact, yeah, let's just save some political capital. We'll save four. Maybe we can do something bigger next time. I don't know. Let's give it a go. Next turn. Housing market boom. Um, okay. Housing prices have hit a record high. This is a good indication that our economy is going from strength to strength. Everyone is making money and able to fulfill their aspiration of growing their property portfolio. Some hawkish economists see this as a temporary bubble. I do tend to agree. Uh, also, it's generally only good for the wealthy or people who already own a home, right? And this is actually really great for a society where most of your wealth comes from a house, uh, which is kind of what the United States is right now. The higher the prices are, the better those people are. It's problem is, like, people like me. I'm right now trying to find uh, a mortgage and I want to go shopping for a house. And even in the last few years, I have seen houses go up like about $60,000 for the same amount of square footage. It's a lot of money, and it's harder and harder for me to get into a market because of this. So housing markets, you know, it seems great and all, except it's really actually bad. This is bad across the board. Poor, unhappy, wealthy or happy, but the generational wealth go gap going up is just terrible. So what we really need to do is actually try to encourage uh, more housing supply to offset this so that there is going to be less of a uh, price jump. Demand from a donor, national anthems and schools. I could do this. I don't need your help as a thing. Um, and I'm pretty sure it upsets ethnic minorities, so I'm going to refuse. I do not care. I just do not care. We still have a surplus of $25 billion. This is okay. Uh, was that an Alex Jones quote? I think it might have been. Uh, fun. So, let's see. So, how are we doing with things like water shortages now? It went down by a fair bit. Too many farmers as a percentage of our population is part of our issue. Reducing farmers is actually good. I want to make them happy, but I don't want a lot of people farming. For example, we have way too many people who are actually participating uh, as members of the uh, farmer demographic. So getting rid of this would be good. That's actually one area where things like vertical farm subsidies is a mistake. Um, we could reduce things like our agricultural subsidies... And what will happen is food prices will go up, which isn't great. But we do reduce our membership by a fair bit. And actually, this makes capitalists happy, and it saves a little bit of cash. I can do this. It will cost a bit, though. But I'm okay with reducing this. Let's go ahead and apply. Okay. Um, any new policies I can do that would be really good? Um... Eco-home regulations, it's only good for energy efficiency. What are our CO2 emissions looking like? I need to know. Like, we've we've changed this a lot lately. Um, CO2. Okay, it is starting to go down. The carbon capture is starting to kick in. Okay. That's good. What if we did free bus passes? It's expensive, but um, this can increase bus usage by a lot. And more bus usage translates into less car usage, which is good. And honestly, I might as well just pass the smart meters. It doesn't hurt me in any way. It just makes us better in energy efficiency. I don't know what happens with the en uh, energy industry, but I guess it just reduces how much money that industry gets, which I'm kind of okay with. I'm really not too worried about them. I'm pretty sure the utility company is doing just fine. Single-use plastic ban. <laughs> Oh, boy. Shock of the amount of plastic pollution in our water supply, our oceans, and even the air we breathe has led for scientists to ban single-use plastics. Like straws, perhaps? Gosh, that... So, <laughs> that policy bothered me. That big movement about plastic straws really bothered me. Like, it's bumpkiss. That use of the straw, unless I'm completely misinformed, but the, that plastic straw thing mostly came from a young child doing a survey. And he just extrapolated some ridiculous numbers, and people just ran with it. I mean, it just exasperates me. To give you an idea, the exact number I heard touted repeatedly 
by prominent media figures and celebrities and politicians uh, is that we consume something like 500 million plastic straws per year, right? But I have not seen a single study that ever corroborates that. The only other two that are even close suggest somewhere between 170 and 320 million per year, based on a New York Times article, which is where I got a lot of this information, right? But no, a 500 million straws per year statistic coming from a nine-year-old who surveyed straw manufacturers sounds a lot better and thus kicks off the great virtue signaling crusade of using paper straws instead of plastic and therefore it saves the earth. I'm not saying that plastic, you know, needs to be reduced. Single-use plastic probably should be reduced, but like this, is this really what's going to save everything? I mean, really, this is the hill you want to die on. Plastic straws? I don't think that this actually makes a big difference. You want to deal with plastic in the ocean? It's not actually from the U.S. It's mostly from, like, a few major rivers in Asia and Africa that are absolutely trashing the oceans with plastic. I'm not opposed to saying we should do paper straws. I'm just saying I don't think it really was a worthwhile crusade. There are more important things to worry about than freaking straws, dude. Come on. I'm going to allow it just because, I, just because it peeves me. Oh, environmentalists don't like it. Well, okay. <laughs> I swear I'm not against environmentalist stuff. Like, I do think the environment's very important. I just think that there's a lot of um, uh, hysteria around a lot of things. And it leads people to kind of, like, get fixated on things that don't matter. Whereas we could be targeting the real problem with, I don't know, let's say a carbon tax. Now, that would be incredibly unpopular and would likely get someone out of a job. But it would be very, very good as far as pricing carbon and changing things. A state water company. Now, here's a thought. This actually exacerbates the water shortage? Really? Oh, I kind of figured that this was actually going to be better. Okay. No, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, public libraries. You know, we have not focused a lot on education. I think this is worth doing. It increases the quality and stuff as well. So it's generally pretty good. Stamp Out Racism Week is good for reducing racial tension and increasing our liberalism membership, which I want to do. And you know what? Let's go ahead and do the Youth Council and just make them happy with me. Let's buy the love of the youth. But motorists are so mad at me because this darn gridlock. Yeah, I think next turn what we do is we're going to have to... Um, are we actually out of, already out of time? I think we might be out of time. Yes, I think we are out of time. Uh, wow, that was... Shockingly fast. Um, I think we are going to have to um, pass some policies to continue trying to reduce that car usage. It's just it's just insane, dude, how much we're doing here. Banning the low MPG cars has several more turns. The fuel efficiency didn't help. It helped the environment, but that's it. New car subsidies. I mean, this does go up by a small amount, but the banning of the low mile per gallon cars is going to make a big difference. It will. Dropping this by another 10% down to about here. Environment is taking a huge dump. Cycling campaign. There, there are a lot of challenges to rapidly growing your GDP in this game. There, there are. Um, pollution. It's improved slightly. Population has grown a lot. Almost because we almost have too good of a healthcare system now. I think. Uncompetitive economy is gradually ticking down. That's good. A little bit more productivity, and we could get rid of that. Though that would actually increase our GDP and temp actually make things worse, technically speaking. Food prices, by the way, have been going up a fair bit, so we need to be very worried about this. Very worried about this. Huh. Huh. I don't know what else to do here. Car usage is making... yeah, making it go down. Game hunting. We haven't really done this. Reduce ban hunting. Why? I don't feel like that should make that much of an impact on the environment, to be honest. Depends on what you're hunting, I suppose. If you're hunting deer, I mean, those guys are freaking rodents and they need to die, okay? I, there's too much danger with those guys, but still. That's beside the point. Um, what does the generational wealth gap do? It reduces equality. I guess it makes sense. Okay. Um, equality has been generally good for us. It increases stability. I'm looking for other things that I want to change. I'm trying to get an idea what to do in the next couple of videos. We've been doing fine in terms of, like, law and order. I'm really not worried about any of that. I'm curious. Can we find some of those, um... I'm not worried about this. Can we find... the, uh, negative crises that could fire? No danger from intelligence, by the way. 
Because aside from having somebody pop up and say, Hey, by the way, this thing is dangerous, I haven't really seen any way to find these crises to see if we're getting close to a start trigger. I'm worried that as the GDP and the technology and stuff goes up, that we are putting ourselves at risk for, like, cyber warfare and other such things, um, identity theft, etc. So I'm a little concerned that we have some problems on the horizon. I'm just not sure what we're going to do about any of them until they start coming closer. But yeah, it's all going to come down to reducing air travel a lot and reducing air, uh, car usage a lot. If we can do that, and I do think a monorail would help a lot with that, um, we can fix the, uh, the environment. If we can fix the environment, some of these nasty events still do go away. Almost everything comes down to managing the environment at this point. All right, well, thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.